Welcome back to Dink's Moorwood. Last time we started a bit of a grind in Kernson, of all places. And so now we're going to finally deal with the place that is the Goblin Sanctuary. Apparently the only way you can get Mog out is to kill all of the goblins. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Acid Rain is a pretty good weapon of choice, although our hyper boots make us pretty fast so we can pretty much avoid getting hit by the attacks. You don't have to kill them in this particular area, but even so, you can still do so for a bit of extra experience. About 150 each. Not much, but still more than most of the enemies you'll see around here. They do take a bit of time to kill and they do dish out a bit of damage, especially with our low defense, but not much that can be done about that. In some cases you can trade off some of your HP for killing them faster. Just gotta make sure you actually hit them. Anyway, we'll just wander around a bit more and then pick our attacks. They don't go aggressive until you actually start hitting them. And it's not like they are a swarm, they don't seem to care for what happens to the next goblin. So here is Mog. Looks a bit silly. Has like a baseball bat with a whole bunch of nails sticking out of it. And yes, we kind of did that to everyone. And so we're gonna go on the path of the cast. But he seems to completely ignore that line of questioning. Looks a bit silly, wielding those two clubs, and seems to have two heads. Either that or some other weird explanation can be brought up for it. Looks kinda goofy though. Not that it's any more difficult than any of the other enemies we've seen so far. So yeah, he falls to the ground and tells us where the camp is. Of all the places, I've been there and it's just been abandoned. So I guess it's just plot related. Let's get some plans, Jink. A brief moment to think and run away. Unfortunately, since Stink was spotted, of course, Stink makes a very snide remark about the last time since he met them. And so, this is probably like the first time we've actually fought the cast properly. Since the first time we basically got a free pass. Because the other guy died. They do a bit of damage, but when they try to attack us they often hit themselves. And so it's just a matter of running around in circles and hitting them every now and again. Or letting them hit each other. Now punch does a bit of damage. The acid rain does nothing. Even so. Not that hard, since they do run pretty slow. Just gotta keep wandering round, they'll fall soon enough. And the screen unlocks for us, how nice. Anyway, let's just use some of these potions to heal up and be back to the town, which is not that far from us, actually. So yeah, let's get ourselves healed and 
by replacing some of our elixirs, the potions that we've been using to keep ourselves healed up. Let's just show the scroll to this girl. Don't think we've actually been formally introduced to what her name actually is, but not that really matters after all. It seems that the cast does want to attack everyone. And what better way than to just bring along a few guards. So we head back to this bookstore and we'll show them the plans. Our proof. Thank goodness the cast set up that secret camp, otherwise we would not have any kind of proof to actually get security. And so the parade was a success. Everyone's just walking right to left. And there's a whole bunch of people I don't recall seeing around here. Maybe it's one of the locked houses or whatever it is. But this is basically showing off every single model they had to work with. At least in this case. And so the parade was a success, and everyone starts moving about. Of course, everyone seems to talk a bit like a robot. Everyone seems to have the same lines. It's kind of worrying, actually. So let's get out of here, and... Oh, everyone's gone. The parade's already over. And everyone just took off. That was a quick parade. Who knows, perhaps the increased security made him a bit paranoid. In any case, let's figure out what to do next. Oh, so... That one area where the bridge was out seems to have actually been fixed for a change. I guess we can head over there. I do believe the place was called Windlemere or something like that. And there we have it. To Windlemere Village. Hmm. Okay, seems like this town seems to be in a bit of disrepair. And people are really angry, or upset, or a mixture of both. Are they suffering a famine or something? Seems like everyone is in need of food for some reason. Not much we can do about that, I'm afraid. Oh, well. Okay, I guess there's more than one person who wields magic. Although, that wasn't very nice of her to try and shoot us. Everyone seems to be trying to kill each other. It seems that food is a very, very scarce commodity. I don't even want to say anything anymore. Let's just move on. This town is in a bit of a mess. So let's go and burn down some trees. Although... That break in the line over there makes me kind of uneasy. Burn it all down. Burn it all down. And let us leave that tree half burnt. Okay, seems that there's a few paths around here. Hear ye, hear ye. By the order of our great ducks, the monthly tax shall be doubled. I guess... Ducks... rule this place? Don't see how they could. This store seems pretty empty. 
I guess we can sell an item, but... That's it, I guess. I guess this person doesn't stock anything. Okay, this place worships ducks. For some reason. Whatever it is. Could punch a duck there, but not really in my best interest to. Wow, these people are really in need of food. And there's just like this weird gold piece on the ground. <laughs> Quite literally one gold. I guess they've been throwing everything they've got at these ducks. Even this house. Ah, a shrine indeed. Not much of a shrine, it's a statue and a whole bunch of ducks. That's about it though. Okay, Dink has mistaken this house for our store. And it seems that there is a lot going on involved with the ducks. Thankfully there's this health upgrade right there. Give us a bit more health while we prepare for the later part of this game. This will beat everything up. Seems to work pretty well. Especially with the amount of defense that we've got. And just clear up all the rest of these enemies. Oh! I guess Fisher starts to show up. I guess we can do one thing that I've always wanted to do. And that's archery! Archery against the fish. This is gonna take a bit of time. We will go down one day. Unfortunately, how they jump out of the water seems to be a bit random, so... You kind of have to wait, and you kind of have to hope that your shot actually makes the mark. Also, it's kind of funny to see if the blood spatter just falls on the water surface without any particular regard. This fish is one of the most stubbornest of them all. And there you have it. Now let's return to the hyper boots, since they are clearly more effective means of killing things. Oh, look. We have a couple of these slayers. Might be a bit of a risk trying to take them all on in our current state. It's not like we've got the most effective fighting means. Even so, we can still hit them pretty hard. They still hit us pretty hard, but provided you do it just right, you can probably avoid a lot of the damage. <laughs> Unlike myself. Oh uh, well, that's what the elixirs are for. And we leveled up! Let's just go and increase our defense, why don't we? Oh. And we can heal up a little bit and just deal with this other slayer, maybe. I'm pretty sure it would be more efficient to use the just the fireball on its own, but hey, gotta give this bow a chance. Oh, the Slayer starts to move. And so we're just left with this thing. And a whole load of blood. Oddly enough, it doesn't seem to have a corpse in this particular section of the game, I'm pretty sure that thing had a corpse at some point. Like, I am almost certain that there is a point in the game where you see one of those corpses of the lizard things. 
Oh well. Okay, it's doing a bit much to us, so maybe we might give it a bit of distance before we retreat. We'll retreat if our health gets low. I don't plan on dying. We don't want to be too wasteful with our elixirs. They are worth coins, so... It's worth keeping them around. Oh. Well, might as well forget that. Ah, huh, pig field. A call back to the old days. Back in Stonebrook, anyway. And here we have this apple tree. But if we hit it... It seems to hint out what to do next at the duck idol. I guess we can get in somehow. But I thought we could get in already. Or was that just me? Anyway, we'll just keep wandering around, burning down trees, as always. And we find ourselves back here, right at the very start of Windermere Village. And I broke myself a barrel. And we have this tree. Your magic is truly useless against me. Oh. <sighs> that was a bad joke. Why did I say it out loud? Huh, there's someone guarding it. Maybe we can ask them to get inside? Okay, that's interesting to note. I mean, you're starving and yet you still insist on giving ducks your food. I guess we can't get access to any of the ducks here, but that's for another episode and another time. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Dinks Mord, and until next time, take care.